Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, saints of God, it's a new normal. I know these are crazy times, but the thing in these crazy times is there is one who has never changed. One who has remained the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And though daily news changes with numbers and statistics and facts and sadnesses, Jesus never changes. He is unchangeable, unshakable. This is our God, the one that we love and serve. Now, we have just come through the Passion Week here in the body of Christ. We've celebrated Palm Sunday without leaving our homes. And then we celebrated Resurrection Sunday in an odd and different way where some churches had drive-through services where you could go to a parking lot and hear the pastor. Many, like our service, is online, and we're doing these live streaming services. This has been a very different season for the church. You know, usually there are Easter pageants and Easter cantatas, and even some churches have Easter egg hunts, and there's just a celebration. It's that day where you get dressed up and your finest, and you come to church with an, an anticipation of a grand service. This is an amazing time in the kingdom of God to have this great celebration of the resurrection of Jesus without being able to celebrate it with our brothers and our sisters. Amen. This is so different. I sit in a studio all by myself. There is no one here but me and a technician. My, the tech guy, this is who is here in this place. It's very odd and very different. And if you're like me, Easter or Resurrection Sunday could be just a faint memory to some. Now, to me, God has given me this message, so I sort of catapulted my way through it. And so I have a message today, and it's called Don't Go home. Now we've all been told to stay home, but I have a, a scripture that God pointed out to me. I mean, my spirit just lit up when I saw this and it's so important and critical that we don't go home, that we do something very special. You see, it is easy to forget what Resurrection Sunday means. And it's, we treat it so differently in the church. It is the Sunday of all Sundays. It's when people who don't normally come to church come to church. It's when families who normally don't worship together come and they sit together in a pew. It is, it is like I said, the Sunday of all Sundays. But if we treat it like that, we are missing something so special and so significant. So let me just give you this scripture because there are 364 other days in the year. The 364 other days to celebrate something that the disciples kind of set the precedence for. So let me give you, I, let, can I just do the story? Because I love the story. So I'm going to give you a little bit longer set of scripture because I just love to tell the story. So this is John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, that would be John, and said to them, they've taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple 
and they were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, but John ran on ahead. I love that. The other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples, what, what they, what? They went home. They simply went home. What in the world? They have just seen something spectacular. Jesus prophesied about it. He told them about it. Now it says they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead, but Jesus gave them um, um, multiple times the understanding that he'd be three days in the grave, that he would have to die, but he'd be resurrected again. And here, something so magnificent has occurred. Now, even if they didn't have a full understanding, their Lord and Savior, his body was missing, was missing. And what do they do? They go home. They simply go home. And I wonder how many of us do that very thing. Now, we know that he was resurrected. We, unlike them, we know the scriptures that he was dead in the grave for three days. And on the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father. We know that he was seen for, for days upon days on the earth after his resurrection. We know that he visited Thomas, that he visited the disciples in the upper room, that he made breakfast for them on the beach. We know that he made appearances. We have it in our scriptures. And we celebrate this amazing, amazing event on Resurrection Sunday. And then we go home. We simply go home to ham and mashed potatoes and hot rolls and maybe a cake for dessert. And then we wake up Monday morning and we're back to normal. We're, we're just back to normal. We go to work on Monday. And this year, most of us stay home on Monday, but we go back to work. Kids go back to school. Everything goes back to normal. It's just Easter Monday, and we, we return things to the way they were before Friday. How can that possibly be? And when the Lord showed that scripture to me, and he brought it to my heart, there was some repentance in me. Because I can remember you know, spending Sunday, getting all ready for Sunday, especially as a worship leader for our church. And uh, I, I sometimes preach on Easter. I preached on this Easter Sunday this year for my church. And, and I get all ready for it, and I prepare, and I pray. And then I get up on Monday morning and think, hmm, okay, well, let me move on to something else because I normally tape my TV shows on Mondays. So my, my head gears to TV on Mondays. But wait. There was a resurrection that happened on Sunday. There was a bodily resurrection on Sunday that we just celebrated. And so did, did you really catch that verse? Then the disciples went away again to their own 
homes. They didn't even stay together. They didn't go back to a, to a, a place and talk about it or pray about it or meditate on it or wonder about it or seek about it. They just went, well, okay, see you later, Peter. Bye, John. Mary, have a good day. See you whenever. They separated and went back to their homes like nothing had happened. This cannot be church. So let me encourage you to not simply to go home. Stay at the tomb for more than a moment and ponder the greatness of what just happened. Stay at the tomb. Ponder it every day. Every day we should be at the tomb pondering and meditating and sitting in awe and wonder of what took place before us. You see, the resurrection isn't part of my theology. It's not just a day. Resurrection is not just a celebration. We forget that Jesus made a critical declaration of who he was. And it changed the resurrection from a day to this. This is John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus declares, I am the resurrection. It's not just a day that we celebrate. It's not just an event, a, a historical event that happened 2,000 years ago. This is the person of Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. So if we just go home after Resurrection Sunday services or after we watch it on TV this year, if we just go home or go and start making dinner, we have walked away in essence, from the fact that Jesus declares himself to be the resurrection. What we're saying to Jesus is, thank you for being my resurrection today, but can you go back to being my savior or my healer tomorrow or my sufficiency or my, my provider? But just for today, you're my resurrection. But then I'm going to put that resurrection kind of in a box and put it on the shelf, and I'm going to pull out who you are next year. Now, I'm not trying to condemn anyone. I'm not trying to, to, to put anything on you or put a, a reproach on you. I'm trying to wake the church up like God had to wake me up to this and remind me that every day I celebrate resurrection in Jesus Christ. That's what we do. Listen, this power, this resurrection, it's the same power that raised Jairus' daughter. It's the same power that calls out demons. It's the same power that healed lepers. It's the same resurrection power that calms the sea. It's the same water-walking power, and it's the power that will never lose its power. And it should be the greatest desire and pursuit of our lives. It was for Paul. Listen to Paul. It, when I looked at this verse with fresh and new eyes, it just thrilled me. So this is Philippians. Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. This is chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. And Paul says, what things are gain to me? These things I, I've counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things for loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of everything. And I count them as rubbish, as trash, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God and by faith. Here's what Paul says. He said, more than anything else that I've lost or could possibly gain, he said that I might know him. This is what I want more than anything, Paul said, that I might know him 
and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul said, I, I have had a lot. I have lost a lot. I count all things as lost and I've given everything up for my Savior. But here's the one thing I want. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus. And I want to know the power of the resurrection. Now, get that. Paul said, this is the desire and the singular pursuit in, these, in this scripture of my heart is to pursue Jesus, to know him more and more, and to know the power, the power of the resurrection. Not just the resurrection. We know the resurrection because we celebrate it one day every year. But Paul said, and I'm sure he did not write this on Easter Sunday. I guarantee you that he wrote this on a Wednesday or a Saturday or a Monday morning. And what he said is, I want to know the power that resurrected my Jesus. I want to know that power. Well, here's a short list of things that Christ's resurrection power guarantees for us. It guarantees that we have a living king. Not a dead one. We have a living king. It guarantees us that all preaching from that resurrection point is purposeful for salvation in God's plan. It says that faith is not futile because of the resurrection. Our sin is forgiven through the resurrection. We have no condemnation because of the resurrection. We are granted a new birth because of resurrection. We have forgiveness of sins because of the resurrection. Our future resurrection is sure. Jenny Fister will one day be resurrected because Jesus was raised from the dead with resurrection power. This Jesus, this resurrection, he said, I am the resurrection. And I don't ever want to take that for granted ever again. I don't ever want to just treat Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday as a special day of celebration. It is an everyday celebration in our lives. That resurrection power should be evidenced in every single day of our lives. This is Acts chapter 2, verses 32 and 33. This Jesus, God raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. Can we understand that because Jesus was raised up and is seated at the right hand of the Father, that the promise of the Holy Spirit has come and that we have the promise of the Holy Spirit in our lives? This resurrection is not a day. This resurrection is a person. And this resurrection should be a very daily part of our lives. So open up your heart and let me take a moment to pour into your spirit a little bit of power and a little bit of truth of what the resurrection means. Are you ready? This is Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if you confess, and that word means to declare, homologeo, to agree with. If you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus is Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. See, it's not, it's not just being able to declare that he is Jesus, the Son of God, Messiah. We have, to, we have to declare and agree with God, homologeo. That word in the Greek means to agree with when it means to confess. That if you agree with your mouth that, Lord Je that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, salvation. This is the power of the resurrection. That salvation comes. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he who condemns? Is it Christ who died? 
and furthermore also is risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. When he was raised from the dead, he went and he seated at the right hand of the Father, and he is praying for you. He is praying for you. Without ceasing, he is praying for you and for me. For all eternity, he is praying and praying and praying and making intercession for you and making intercession for me. All because he's the resurrection. Not just a day, but the person, the resurrection, the person. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. We will all have a bodily resurrection. I am going to get a new glorified body one day. I believe it's soon and very soon. Listen, I'm of the mindset in my heart that this pandemic is the birth pains that the Bible proclaims will usher in the rapture of the church. I, I believe we are moments away. We are spiritual minutes away from the rapture of the church. And we are all going to receive glorified bodies. Why? Because Jesus is the first fruit of the resurrection. And because he made the way, we now have a way of resurrection. It is absolutely clear from salvation to him praying for us and delivering us the Holy Spirit and then resurrecting us from the dead one day. Our whole lives, it's clear that everything about our lives stands or falls with the bodily resurrection of Christ from the grave. That's powerful. And that's why we cannot just treat it like a day. We cannot treat Easter with the bunny. We cannot treat Easter with eggs. We can treat Easter with resurrection every single day of the year. You can have the Easter bunny. You can have the eggs. I want to be like Paul. I want to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. See, this is why Paul wrote this. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. If Christ is not risen, your faith is ridiculously futile, and you are still in your sins. That grieves me. That grieves me. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ They've perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. Here what Paul said, that if Christ did not rise from the dead, why have faith at all? And he said, if Christ did not rise from the dead, then you are still in your sins. And there's no way out. You can find no way out of your sinful nature. You will just be a, a victim of your flesh, a victim of your sin nature for your whole life. And then he said, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then those who have died before us, parents, friends, loved ones, then they're just gone. They've just perished. There's no future for them. And he said, if this, if we only have hope in this life and not what's to come, then we are to be a man most pitiable. But Christ is risen from the dead. And what will you do with this Jesus who came back from the dead? What will you do with the resurrected Lord? Believe on him, 
trust in him, trust him as your savior to deliver you from sin and death and hell and the grave? Will you make him the Lord of your life with all the assurances that we've just talked about? These belong to you because we don't celebrate a day. We celebrate the, the person who is the resurrection. When you know the power of Christ's resurrection and when you know Christ himself, remember Paul linked that back in Philippians, I want to know Christ and the power of the resurrection because he is the resurrection. Jesus declared, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And when we come to know that power of his resurrection and know all that that guarantees for us, <gasps> we can live a life like no other. So don't go home. Stay at the tomb filled with wonder and awe that the stone has been rolled away and he is not there and he is risen just as he has said. And he is ascended to the right hand of the Father, seated at the right hand, and will one day very soon rapture us out and take his bride home. If you do not know this Jesus, this is the perfect time, this perfect season to come to the saving knowledge of who he is. And we want to help you. If you want to call us or get online, go to the website, type us a prayer. We want to pray with you. We'll talk to you. We want to show you who this Jesus is. In fact, I want to show you the empty tomb. I want to be able to show you the power of resurrection in your life, not just to save you, but to empower you and to give you a future and a hope that one day you too will be resurrected along with Jesus. This is my prayer. This is my heart's desire that you might know him, Jesus, and the amazing, astounding power of his resurrection. Call us. Let us pray for you. Get online. Go to somebody in your hometown. Talk to someone in a church or a neighbor that you know loves Jesus. And let them direct you and help you. Because this life is the most beautiful life that God is painting your life with his one brush stroke at a time. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brush Stroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brush Stroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brush Stroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 260. 201. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brush stroke at a time.